Welcome to the Advanced Freelancing Podcast. Every week, you'll hear strategies for building your online service-based business your way. And now, here's your host, veteran freelancer, author, and TEDx speaker, Laura Briggs. Thanks for tuning in and being a loyal subscriber, hopefully to the Advanced Freelancing Podcast. I'd so appreciate it if you hopped over to iTunes to leave me a review. It helps other people find the show. Today's episode is perfect for you if you've always been curious about the world of nonprofit grant writing. My guest today is Teresa Huff, and she is a grant strategist and content marketer who has helped nonprofits triple their funding. She has a master's in education and over 20 years of experience. She's now figured out how to survive and thrive in her geeky, introverted life while working from home and juggling her kids, husband, and a crazy chihuahua. After winning several million dollars in funding for schools and nonprofits, her goal is now to equip other freelance writers to change the world. And we will share the resources in the show notes for you to be able to take her quiz. Do you have what it takes to be a grant writer? I think you'll love this show because she really breaks down the concept of what grant writing is, some easy do's and don'ts, and what you can expect when partnering with nonprofits. If you've been thinking about expanding your freelance services in 2020, or you're currently a writer and have always wanted to offer grant writing but didn't know how, this is the episode for you. Hello, everyone. It's time for another episode of the Advanced Freelancing Podcast. This one is way overdue because I've always been curious about grant writing, but didn't know what it involves. So we're hopefully going to be chatting about a lot of different things and as far as what grant writing looks like. But I want to introduce our guest today, Teresa, who is here to talk to us all about how she got into grant writing, how to know if it's the right fit for you, and whether or not this is a service you should consider breaking into either as a freelance writer or even if you're doing some other type of freelance service. So welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm excited to be here and thanks for inviting me. Yeah, I'm really happy to be able to talk to you. I think it would be helpful for our audience to know your before story. So how did you break into grant writing and what were you doing before this became your freelance passion? Well, what you said kind of echoes my history. It, I always thought grant writing sounded interesting and I was pretty good at writing. But back when in, when I first started, Google wasn't a thing. So I was kind of on my own to find some other resources. And I first started my career as a special education teacher. And I learned a lot with that and a lot of skills that were actually transferable to grant writing. So when we first started our family and started having kids, I really wanted to stay home and be available for my kids. But yet I had just gotten this master's degree and wanted to still use my education somehow to supplement our family's income. So I heard of a lady who did grant writing nearby, and I met with her, and we talked for quite a while. And then she said, hey, I'm looking for someone else to add to my team if you're interested. And so I jumped the chance, and she was such a wonderful mentor for a couple of years. And I worked with her, learned under her, and just kind of jumped right into the deep end with that, that I had that team support to kind of watch and ask her questions and go along with that. So it was better than the beginnings of Google that we didn't really have it back in that time. And we didn't have much access to these online courses and things that are available today. So that was a great way for me to get started because it was personalized to my questions and a great way to learn and watch her and kind of absorb all of her knowledge and wisdom. So that was how I got into it. And then it just kind of went from there and led to a lot of other opportunities. I've worked on some curriculum for Megablocks and um, just led to some other opportunities as well that I never would have had otherwise. I love that because I always tell people, you know, when you're interested in something new, start talking to someone who's done it, you know, find the expert and follow the proven path. And I think a lot of times it's one of the reasons that us more established freelancers are so willing to help other people and provide expertise and do things like these podcast interviews because we want other people to know that it's possible to break in and that this is a real thing. I mean, my only regret is I wish I'd started sooner when I was in graduate school getting my master's. I think I made $1,100 a month as a teaching assistant and my rent was like $600. So it's like I was always scraping by, right? And I had these writing skills that if I'd started to refine them, then it would have helped financially, but it also would have helped me launch my business. And I just didn't know about it. Um, Right. And at the time, who 
knew? I mean, you yeah. wouldn't have realized the expertise you had and how that can apply to different things. Exactly. And so now that we have the internet and so many more companies are open to working with freelancers and remote employees, we have a better chance, like our possible pool of clients is much bigger than, you know, previously it might've been limited to what agencies are in your area or for you, like what nonprofits are in your area. And now you have a much bigger client pool. Um, So what do you think are some of the misconceptions or confusing things about grant writing that kind of stop other people from jumping in? I hear a lot of these and a lot of different things around this. Grant writing is kind of this thing that everybody knows about, but it's a big mystery as to how to actually do it or what it really is. So one of the most common things that I hear is just, oh, let's just start a nonprofit. We'll get some grants to fund it and get it going that way. But that's not how it works. Funders don't want to be your first dollar or your only dollar. So they don't want to fund you if you're not making money already and serving clients and well-established. So it's not a good way to start up a nonprofit, but it's a great way to supplement the programs you're already doing. Another thing I hear often is that... Um, If you're not serving any clients yet, which I kind of alluded to, then the funders typically don't want to fund that. They want to see, do you have numbers? Do you show that there's a need? Do you have people asking for more services? And you have this program extension that you want to add on that you just can't fund quite yet, but you have the people coming in and needing it and you have actual proof of that. So they want to see the proof. I I like that a lot. Um, So how did you know when it was it in the early days of learning this from somebody else and starting to work on it? How did you know that this was going to be a fit for you? Were there certain aspects like I know for me, writing blog posts is a great fit for my personality because I like quick projects where there's minimal revisions. What kind of personality traits do you think play in well to being a grant writer? A lot of that went back to, I always liked to write and I always had a book in my hand. So I was always reading, not that you have to be, but it's helpful if you have those writing skills and at least enjoy it. I, in special education, I did a lot of writing and paperwork and we learned how to write good goals and objectives. That was a huge piece of the paperwork and the writing that we had to do. And there was a long description we had to do about each student and that narrative. And I really enjoyed that part of it. And that those skills really transferred to grant writing well, because you do have to write a lot of goals and objectives. You have to figure out which elements of this program should we pull out and which things do we need to really highlight and work on. You kind of have to strategize as a bigger piece of the picture. And so those skills were really helpful in doing that. And it's helpful if you're good with numbers and budgeting, kind of those all around skills. But if you have some strengths kind of in one of those areas, it's really helpful. Mm. That is great for people who are thinking like, would this be a good fit for me? So maybe you could break down in, you know, sort of, a, you know, 30 to 45 seconds. What are the types, what does a grant writer really do? You know, and if it's helpful for you to be like, this is what a typical day looks like for me, we could go that route too. So I'd be curious, like the perception of what grant writer is might be different than the reality. So I'm curious to hear what you would describe as a grant writer's core functions. Right. One of the first things that I wish I had known when I started out 15 years ago is that grant writing is really about much more than physically writing a grant. It's really about strategy and big picture and helping the nonprofit figure out what are your long-term goals? How can you best serve your clients? What's your why? And it's about how having every piece of what you do build to help them reach that why. So it's much more than just writing a grant. It's more about looking at every opportunity and how can it help them fulfill their mission. That's a great point. So it sounds like one of the core components of this is that the freelance grant writer has to be willing to do a deep dive into the organization. It doesn't seem like it's something where you could kind of have a quick 15 minute kickoff call and and you can kind of get the basics. You really have to do some of your own research to figure out what this organization is all about and think big picture about their mission. 
Yes, definitely. You really need to understand their mission because part of what you have to do is portray it to funders. You're kind of selling them to the funder and you have to paint this picture on paper that conveys the need and the sustainability and how this is a worthy cause. It's kind of like in fun- in business when your investor is looking at the ROI and is this a good investment? Funders are the same way. They want to see the ROI of their grant. These funds that they're going to invest in your nonprofit, are you sustainable? Are you going to use these funds in a good way? Can we make a big impact? That's what they're looking for. So it's about their bottom line too, just from a different perspective. This podcast episode is sponsored by my course, The Guide to Killing It on Upwork. Inside the course, you'll learn all my secret tips and tricks for how to search for jobs, find the right clients, have an amazing profile that attracts people to work with you before they even know you, and how to write a killer pitch that gets your client's attention and stands you way above the competition. If you're interested in learning more about how to enroll in this course, check out tinyurl.com slash guide to Upwork course. Perfect. Now, do you find that there's a component of setting client expectations? I mean, one of the things that I've known about grant writing is that sometimes the you know client will have this brand new nonprofit and they're kind of expecting to win a million dollar grant. Do you find that there's a component of when you do your proposals or your pricing and everything where you have to set client expectations as far as what's reasonable considering your current programming, your current success of that programming, and the type of grants that we're applying for? Yes, that's an excellent question and definitely something that is important as the grant writer to do because grants are not quick money. You can't just get it overnight or if something breaks down or you run out of funds for a program, you can't just apply for a grant and expect to have a check next week. It usually takes several months to apply, to wait on their review and decisions, and then a few more months even sometimes to get the actual check and the money in hand. So it's not a quick fix and you do need to set those expectations up front. And I, one of my clients, I've, it's interesting because I have had to kind of educate them a lot, but they've been so open to it. And now I hear them telling other people things that I've taught them. And it's just, it's kind of (laughs) funny, but it's also rewarding in a way like, yes, they're getting it. They're understanding. And so it is a lot of education and a lot of, helping them understand you don't want to discourage them or put out their fire for their cause. If they're passionate about it, that's wonderful. But you also do have to give them a reality check sometimes and help them understand what's realistic here and what can you really do? What's the best approach that's going to help you be successful? That's great. So I'd love to hear your perspective on some do's and don'ts of grant writing, some things that someone should know before they even get started and be, that will help them be more successful and feel more confident about it. Some of the missteps you see other grant writers make and then some things that you're like, if someone did this from day one, they're much more set up for success. I would first start with the way you approach the client and the way that you are bringing value to the organization as a whole. You're helping them understand their mission and vision and their goals and how that can benefit them and how to convey that to funders. So first, I would make sure that the client has several sources of income, meaning several different types of funding. Are they doing fundraisers? Do they have private donations? grants, they need to have several different types of income besides just grants. And they need to be sustainable and they need to have community support. So I would say if you can go into it that way, then pull that out of the organization and help them understand the value of building this foundation before you start writing grants. And if you've never written a grant before, or if an organization hasn't ever received a grant, I would start small. Don't worry about winning or losing. Just start small. Look for a grant that's a good fit. Don't try to overshoot and don't go for the million dollar grant if you've never gotten any funds or if the budget is small for the organization. Just start with maybe a $500 or $1,000 local grant so you can learn the process, so you can learn the client and learn how to work with each other. 
And then you can build from there because each time you go through the process, you'll get to know each other a little better. You'll know the organization a little better and it'll just continue to improve and kind of build on itself. I would be careful as a grant writer to don't chase the dollars. Don't go after grants that aren't a good fit. It's tempting sometimes, but if it's not a good fit, then you're going to be forcing something that's not right for the organization. Maybe they're having to pull staff away from other important programs to implement this grant that really wasn't in line with their mission to begin with. So that's something you kind of have to watch for. And even if you see it, you may have to educate the client again on that as well. They may think, oh, I heard about this grant. Let's write it. And you may have to step in and say, you know, that's really not going to be the best direction for you based on your goals. So let's pass on that one and look for some others that are really going to be more in line with your mission. So and one another thing, don't. Oh, go ahead. Oh, go, go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. One other don't is just I would be careful not to do too much cookie cutter. Once you've written a few grants, you can kind of pull from the others to not have to start from scratch each time. But you do really need to be careful to customize each application because even I've written the same grant in subsequent years for the same client, but sometimes they'll change one or two questions just a little bit on the application. So you really have to watch those details in every specific piece of that to follow those guidelines. That's perfect. And it sounds like one of the things you mentioned is getting to know that client so that you can be more successful in future work, which makes me think that there's the potential for ongoing work. Is that typical in the nonprofit grant writing world where it's not just a one-time engagement, but your clients are interested in working with you, um, you know, on additional projects as well? Typically, yes. I mean, it doesn't have to be. Sometimes there might be one specific large grant that a client wants. I've done that for a couple of different school districts where they wanted to apply for a large federal grant. And so that was kind of a one time, once or twice that we worked on that project because that was a specific thing that they needed expertise from an experienced grant writer. But I would say in general, most of my clients have been that ongoing relationship where we've worked together for several years. And that's where you really get to know each other. You build that respect and that mutual conversation and just uh, ongoing support. And then the more you do that, also the more they're willing to listen to your advice, ideally. And um, just you kind of know what would be best for them and they trust that you are recommending what's best for them. That's perfect. Um, it definitely is an opportunity to build value from day one and, and still have some of those one-time projects, but also be able to work on again and again with clients where you do a really good job. Um, so I know that not everyone is probably the right fit to be a grant writer. Um, can you talk a little bit? I know that you have a quiz, for example, to help people figure out, hey, is this type of freelance service right for me or not? Uh, maybe you can speak a little bit about what that quiz is like and, and some things that might give people a sneak peek as far as, oh, I'd be a really good fit to do this. Yeah, I thought that would be a great way just for somebody to kind of take a little piece of the mystery out of it and just see, is this right for me to even start? And so it's at my website, teresahuff.com slash biz quiz. And it just kind of goes through a few questions, maybe 10 or so questions that kind of evaluate your level of expertise and interest in certain areas. Do you hate budgets? Do you love writing? Kind of goes through those different things. And it covers different types of actual skills and also some interpersonal traits and your internal characteristics as well. So it kind of goes through all of those areas and then puts it together just to give you some feedback on what would your next steps be and what could that look like for you. Oh, I'm so excited to be able to share that resource with my audience because I think there are some writers out there and then some people in other freelance services who are thinking, hmm, I've always been interested in this, but I don't know if I have enough information to make a firm decision yet. Um, so it's really been a pleasure to get to speak with you and I look forward to sharing this episode. Thank you so much for your time to come on the show. 
Thank you. It's been great. I've enjoyed it. And I hope it's been helpful to encourage writers out there to give it a shot. I would say just start small and try it and think of it as a learning experience with each grant you write. Whether or not you win, just keep trying and give it a shot. So yeah, just I would say go for it and give it a chance. Excellent advice. Thank 